Okay, we're going to do some testing here on the uh, fan, hydraulically driven fan on this IT28. So again, there's a fixed displacement pump, gear pump here that feeds the fan and brakes. On the back of that pump, we've got our combination priority valve and accumulator charging valve for the brake system. And again, that priority valve, once the brake system is satisfied, the accumulators are charged and the valve has cut out uh, the accumulator charging, then it's going to direct uh, the flow from this pump to the fan motor at the back through this hose. Turn the fan motor, oil is going to return to tank. Uh, and then there's a drain line off of this uh, fan motor as well, which uh, handles flow from the relief valve. So the relief valve for the fan circuit is mounted in the motor. So on the uh, supply line to the fan, we've put a uh, O-ring face seal T in here so we can put our pressure gauge in and check pressure. And again, there's a module in the book, uh, specs, systems operation, testing and adjusting for the brakes and fan. So when I go in here, we're gonna look at what they tell us to do for uh, checking the fan. We'll do the fan speed and pressure test, or at least we'll discuss the, the speed part of it. Um, and then we'll look at the uh, operation as well. So they're so showing the system here. They've got the brake pump up here at one. Uh, three, they've got the priority valve. And then at uh, two, they've got the unloader for the, uh, the cut in and cut out. And then number eight is the accumulator charging valve itself, which is going to charge up our brake accumulators nine and ten. And again, once they're satisfied and the priority valve has determined that, then the oil is going to leave and go to the fan motor, which is number five here. Unidirectional motor. They don't do anything fancy on this machine, like reversing the fan or anything like that. This generation of loader. And then there's the relief again at the motor. And then there's an overrun check valve. So when we shut the engine off and this fan pump, fan and brake pump, quits sending oil to the fan motor, the inertia of the fan is going to want to keep it turning. So we're going to have this check valve that is going to regenerate some oil around in a circle and just keep the fan from trying to, to stop or cavitating from not getting any oil sent anymore from the pump. And then the oil returning from the fan motor runs through our hydraulic oil cooler. So we've got this run co line coming out of the fan motor and that runs up to our oil cooler. And then from the oil cooler, we go back uh, through this hose, back to the filter and back to tank. Very unique in this, uh, this circuit that that is the only oil on this entire hydraulic system that's cooled and filtered. So this is what they call a kidney loop or a partial flow filtration system. So with the loader hydraulics, the brakes, the steering, none of that oil is going through a filter. It's being drawn from the tank. There may be a suction screen in the tank, I'm not sure, but generally all those systems, the steering pump, the main hydraulic pump, none of that oil is filtered, either on the suction side or returning the tank. What they do is the same way your kidneys work um, they were siphoning off some blood for filtering. Uh, well, this machine, they call this kidney looping because only the portion of the oil flow that's going through the fan motor is going through the cooler and getting filtered. So they've put an oversized cooler for the job on there and they put generally a, uh, a 10 micron, a fairly fine uh, uh, filtration uh, rating on here. So it's probably a 10 micron filter. Uh, but it's a high efficiency filter. So they're not filtering all the oil on the system, but what they're filtering, uh, they're filtering, filtering to a smaller micron size. Uh, you can argue the logic in your own mind. I prefer, personally prefer a full flow filtration system, but uh, it, is, it is how they're doing it on this machine. So the only oil getting filtered on this machine, again, is what's coming back from the fan, fan motor circuit. So there's the uh, brake and fan system schematically. And speed and pressure test. Uh, they tell us to connect a 5,000 PSI pressure gauge to inlet port 3 on the motor. So we've done that here. It's a more convenient location. Uh, then they tell you to plug the outlet port. 
So what they're telling you to do is plug the outlet port of the fan motor, start the engine up, that'll force all the oil over the relief valve. And as mentioned, there's a return hose coming from the relief valve, which runs back into the clean side of the filter, right back into the tank. Um, so they want you to do that. They tell you to do that and then uh, start the engine and see what the pressure goes to. So they want to force that relief valve to open. So if you're the type that believes everything you read, you would plug off that fitting and that would force the relief valve then to open because the oil couldn't turn the fan motor and it would go out the uh, return line. Uh, when our tech did that a couple of years ago, uh, they found out that that return line can't handle the flow. As soon as you start the engine, the uh, fan motor housing splits in two. So, uh, I knew uh, to question that process right off the bat the first time I saw this service manual procedure, but uh, I can't fault someone for following a Caterpillar service manual word for word and doing what they say, but uh, they wrote this procedure obviously without, without proving it. So we're not going to do that <laughs> for obvious reasons. Um, you know, we got a, we got a spare relief valve, I guess, as part of this motor. Um, so what we're going to do is simply start up the unit uh, and see what the pressure is here, feeding the fan while it's turning. And then all we'll do is accelerate the engine quickly with the throttle. And when we accelerate the engine, knowing that gear pump's going to accelerate with the engine, I know the fan's not going to be able to, to pick up speed immediately, so we're probably going to open the relief valve every time we, f we f you know, step on the throttle or floor the engine. So we'll do it that way and we'll see what the pressure peaks out at and that'll basically tell us what our relief valve is set at at the motor. So there's the uh, pressure at idle. there so it looks like we're going to about 2050 psi as our maximum pressure and our spec for that relief 2030 plus or minus 25 so we're bang on um, so didn't need to uh, block off the return out of the motor at all you just rev the engine up you're gonna see your maximum pressure so that's what that is. so this fan system with its fixed displacement pump fixed displacement motor is really a very basic open circuit hydrostatic system. Uh, the reason for driving this fan hydraulically is not as sophisticated as it was on our G976 grader. We don't have a variable uh, fan speed irrespective of RPM. The only way, you know, basically this is just a hydraulic fan belt. As you rev the engine up, the uh, fan pump turns faster, therefore the fan motor turns faster, therefore the fan turns faster. So, you know, the question might be, why not just have a fan belt? And the answer to that is emissions. Um, you know, a modern machine like this, every modern wheel loader, the engine is basically sealed in one compartment. We don't have ambient air traveling across the engine block so they can regulate the temperature of the, the engine, engine block and cylinder head better for emissions reasons. So even this machine's older, it doesn't have any very sophisticated emissions. It still has some forethought into that. And then with that, generally on a loader, you'll see a big exhaust pipe. That's not to make it look cool specifically. That's to create a Venturi effect by having a small pipe inside a larger pipe and draw a uh, specified amount of air over the engine based on exhaust flow rather than have the wind from a fan blowing across the engine. So a modern wheel loader, the fan is sealed in one box, as it is on the grater as well. And, uh, you know, then we've got our hydraulic tank and cooling package here where airflow moves this way out the side uh, vents. And then our engine is basically somewhat sealed from that airflow. Later versions of, 
a wheel loader like this may have reversing may have a reversing fan option may have a variable pump where like our grader where they're going to change the uh, speed of the fan with a swash plate in a axial piston pump or something but this one is not that sophisticated this again is just fixed displacement pump fixed displacement motor and uh, rpm of the of the engine determines the pump flow determines the motor speed 